The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And we all know only one thing matters, and that is here when we come together at the sacred and anointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And, uh, well, let me update that just to make double double secret top sure up about 13 points on the S&P cash uh, you kind of very interesting to see uh, a market that was extremely weak last Tuesday uh, turned around uh, a bit uh, on Wednesday and through the end of the week uh, we found out that the Fed had thrown almost five billion dollars into the market the question I have is, uh, you get those numbers Thursday night, I believe, after the markets close. I wonder what we're going to see this week. We're going to see a second week come in. Uh, I was uh, saying I wasn't exactly sure why the Fed was doing it, but probably some communications between them and the Chinese gives us an idea that uh, they were expecting some fairly weak news out of their economy. And instead of doing what they said, which is pulling money out of the market, uh, they were actually pushing money back in, at least uh, uh, equities. So we'll see. But, of course, uh, that everything has a opposite uh, and uh, equal effect. That actually uh, popped the dollar, uh, which I didn't get. I should have this up and I don't. Get it back over here. Uh, get up the latest on the dollar here. Uh, 106, uh, 385, of course, and that put the uh, the old hurt on gold and crude. Uh, gold's down a little over 1%. Uh, crude's down about 3%. I think it was off of maybe 5% earlier when I was looking. And... So you've got that. Now, a lot of people think that, wow, this is going to be much better uh, for the economy. And I don't understand if China was shut down and they didn't have a lot of the production, how is that, how is that stuff going to get here? We're going to sell it and continue on. I understand that it drops interest rates, maybe, if the Fed decides to, to uh, blink. But I don't understand how it actually makes anything better. And lower interest rates are fine. But I don't think it does really much. So I'm not at, uh, I'm not uh, I'm not in sync with what the market thinks. Um, but uh, are they double dog daring everybody in the Fed not to raise rates? I think it's uh, well, we're going to have to wait till September. But I don't see a lot of reasons to believe that the Fed's going to do anything different, at least for a few quarters. Well, at least a few months, maybe a few quarters. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always leave a message in the den. So, yeah, 106.41. Uh, it certainly looked like a lot was getting ready to shake loose last week, but uh, the Fed has ro uh, has uh, come to the rescue. Now, uh, as we let me close, well, let me just park this somewhere out here. Uh, <laughs> Mark likes my uh, my uh, title for today. My uh, my little cream mint on your on your. Uh, Pillow. Children are hereditary. If your parents didn't have any, neither will you. And he says, insanity is hereditary. You get it from your kids. But uh, you know what? I don't, this isn't a big bounce, 
But I think a lot of people are whistling past the graveyard, doubling down on Walmart and K- uh, Kmart, Walmart and uh, Target earnings this week. Uh, that'll be out here. I think the, we'll go through those later in the show. Uh, other than that, uh, all quiet on the Western Front. Uh, Starbucks um, getting involved a great deal with the unions. And you would think for such a progressive company, uh, they wouldn't be... Uh, flailing away like this but uh, if you believe their rhetoric opposed to the union Iser's rhetoric uh, there's a lot going on with the uh, uh, labor board uh, that uh, may be putting their uh, big thumb on the scale at least that's what the Starbucks executives are saying uh, they had somebody come out of the National Labor Relations Board saying so uh, a so-called whistleblower and uh, we'll see anyway Starbucks up just a little but uh, eh, not a lot of juice out there about half volume but again uh, we're up at a lot of these levels where these stocks are just kind of petering out for volume the question is do we just stay up here as the Fed continues to throw more money at the problem and that is it Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always, always leave a message in the den. Uh, okay, we got about two minutes to go. Let's do a little history, and then when we come back, we'll go right to charts. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day... Ooh, in 1969, the Woodstock Music Festival opens on a patch of farm line, uh, farm line, farm land in White Lake, a hamlet in upstate New York, town of Bethel. Uh, dairy farmer Max Yagsgar, Yagsgar came to the rescue at the last minute because uh, everybody else had told him they couldn't use their property, giving the promoters access to his 600 acres of land in Bethel, some 50 miles from Woodstock. So shouldn't it have been called Bethel? Woodstock. Even though Woodstock had left its promoters nearly bankrupt as everybody just knocked down the fences and stormed the Bastille, uh, it was originally supposed to have about 50 or 60,000 smelly hippies, uh, ended up with about 400,000. And, of course, uh, like I said, uh, eh, no ticket, no problem, just knock down the fences. Uh, anyway, their ownership of film and recording rights basically saved their bacon over the next two uh, and three years as their documentary film was probably the only decent thing that actually came out of it. Uh, anyway, on this day in 1969, many people from that generation thought that uh, excess, especially in drugs and other things, was the way to go. Yeah, kind of closing the door on that kind of idea. Probably more of its legacy in 1970. Uh, people didn't try doing it again until 19, what, 96, 99, with about the same effect. We'll be back after this. booming inflation, where purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect the hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 and as we come uh, back from our well-deserved break of two and a half minutes. Uh, okay. Let's take a look at a few coming our way. New Age Beverages. Well, doesn't look like much is going on with this one, does it? Uh, some support at a quarter. I'm trying to think if there's anything else uh, else going on out here. Uh, that's a 15th, right? Okay. I don't know when this actually comes out or is announced. Uh, TME, which is Tencent Music Group. Why does it say modern era? Let's do this. Tencent Music Group. Okay. Financial Influence Energy Zip Recruiter. I don't see a lot in here that probably is going to do much. Yeah, got a little pop up here. No volume though in this one. ZIP is the uh, symbol for it, but you're going through the highs of May 13th and June 6th. But uh, not a lot of juice in that. Let's go into tomorrow, which I think is really where we're going to see things go on. Um, people in the den talking about all the retail stores that have come and gone. We had uh, no one put in their venture. Did you guys have uh, ventures in your area? I remember we had ventures before we had Kmart. And venture was kind of like a target. It was a little more upscale than the uh, Kmart, but those kind of came and went. Caldor, Ames, don't know about that. I wonder if Venture was just in the Midwest, but I like the store. I remember it was better than the Kmart. Uh, I remember the Kmart was new or fairly new, and it still had the uh, fluorescent lights that already turned yellow around everything, and the uh, acoustical tile had 
uh, rain, uh, wet uh, uh, spots all over it, too. It looked creepy from about the time it was uh, began. Uh, okay, so we're looking at Walmart. Um, you're back, kind of back up to this uh, flight. Yeah, is that it? I know the rest of them. I, maybe that's why no one has uh, roofs anymore. They just kind of spray the ceiling. I wonder if that is it. Other than it's cheaper to build. Walmart. You gap down. Got to 1676. You're back up on very light volume. The upside is probably 140 if they guide higher. Eh. It's hard to say about anything else out here being lower. But, uh, yeah, probably the the most, I'd look at the options, but I bet the most is about 140, 142 on the high side. And uh, if they really whiff, probably 120. you got a decent range in that, possible. I just don't know. Uh, the, probably the biggest thing is when I've been into the Walmarts is just how much stuff that they're out of. And maybe that's going to be a bigger factor, if especially if China continues to uh, have low economic output, since most of the stuff comes from China. Home Depot uh, back at previous highs with very light volume. Uh, really, 308, 99 was the high volume high out here with about 12 and a half million shares. Got into that on August 8th with a with a. Uh, a uh, island reversal with a doji back here but we've kind of come back up into these highs i don't see a lot in here just light volume at previous highs so you're not getting a lot of people thinking that they know what's going on uh to, to agilent technologies after the bell tomorrow night Again, a lot of these things just hanging up here. Almost all of them have challenged the previous highs on lighter volume. On this case, on Agilent, uh, June 7th, uh, $130.97 with 3.4 million shares. Got tested with 2.2 million shares. Pulled back a little bit. Didn't have a lot of volume and now back up higher into that high that had 3.4, then 2.2 million shares, and today about 534,000 shares. So I think, uh, well, I didn't think that was a lot of action coming in the market based on these numbers last week. It certainly looks like what's happened over the last few days on light volume does set up a kind of a binary outcome on many of these. Let's see what else we have. Uh, L I T E. Light momentum. L momentum. Another one. Again, just a lot of these eh, trying to claw through previous highs. In the case of uh, LITE, the May 18th high that had 2.4 million shares got uh, 600,000 shares on Friday, breaking it. And again, 700,000 some odd shares today. So you are going through the previous highs on a lighter volume there. To, to BHP. Eh, I don't know. You're just back up to resistance. So these gaps down, on this case, gap uh, back down from June 30th. 3.6 million shares on that day. You got to it with 3 million shares. Not a lot of pullback here. Let's see if there's anything else out here that catches my eye. Don't see much of that. So that's uh, Tuesday. Let's get into Wednesday. Cisco Systems. Uh, this one, if I'm not mistaken, really whiffed at last earnings. I think it was up after the bell. And then uh, just got creamed. I think they were pushing it up two or three bucks. And then earnings came out. And this thing fell like a rock from about uh, 49 bucks down to 40, which is pretty big for this. Uh, when I started trading uh, this stock into the early 2000s was notable for just how many absolutely share huge amount of shares they had outstanding. 
Uh, at one point, I think in 2005, Cisco had a share for every human on the planet. And that was quite the deal back then. Um, just back up to resistance levels. I It's hard for me to believe anything's gotten any better for Cisco. I don't know that it's a lot worse. But uh, up against fairly decent resistance uh, from that huge day down with had over 100 million, well, almost 100 million shares uh, down to $40.65. And he had, uh, what, 17 million shares on Friday. So not really coming up with gusto. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, Fortinet is the first request of the day. Certainly you have a huge uh, gap down that came on just uh, telling everybody that with any kind of pullback, uh, generally CEOs cut off security is one of the first things, uh, or spending on security, uh, cybersecurity, that kind of stuff. You're down here, down just in the lows. I don't know exactly what your question on it is. You know, probably 58, 59, maybe 60. If you wait long enough back into that gap, um, would be best case scenario. Uh, just that's an ugly, ugly gap, and it's going to take a long time to go back and uh, set back uh, something up. But I mean, I think the best you can hope for, like I said, is maybe 59 ish, maybe 60. My guess is if it 
tick those, I'd be out of it if I was long already. But uh, I don't think there's a lot there there if you're not in it again already. Do, do, do. And do, do, do. what do we have here? UCO, which is the crude oil, uh, actually testing uh, the previous lows back in July on July 14th, $31.02. You go and test that uh, you know, about a dollar higher, but certainly in that candle on a little lighter volume, 2.6 million shares on August 5th. You again bounce up to 38.05. You come back down. Uh, today and bounce off of it with about 2.2 million shares. You'd like it to come under 2.6 today, but man, you're looking at least some level of support. It's hard for me to think that the economy doesn't fall off. I mean, this has got to be a fairly good in indicator that the economy's sucking uh, if no one is driving anywhere. But hey, that's just me. Uh, but certainly, you got to move back lower. Um, I'd want it to test 3102 with this kind of action. Uh, and you got light volume so far, but you need less than 4 million. I love for it to come in, wash a bunch of folks out, and have it close back above 3102 to give you a good buy signal. But uh, that's it. Uh, to, to, I can't remember who asked this. I closed the message, and now I can't remember. Uh, the next en uh, 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 era energy has been kind of creeping up. I did have a nice gap higher and through the previous resistance area in about the 86, 87 area. I uh, did kind of gap up to the bottom of that and then continue to claw through. No reason to th see a lot of changes here. Um, off along in the tooth. I don't know what, again, what the questions are for this one, but uh, very kind of, uh, eh, it's up there on kind of light volume. So you got to be very careful about this uh, and the general market in itself. Uh, um, okay. Anyway, uh, I don't see much else going on in that. We'll check some more emails here. Oh, we got lots of stuff. Okay. Check a few more here. See if there's anything here. Question about uh, am, am I going to short this? I think we're probably fairly close to a top, but at this point, markets that are kind of nuts tend to get more nuts than you would think. And you want a fairly good indication uh, that the market's ready to turn. And I haven't seen that, at least from the option market makers. Uh, we're way, way, way out on the, uh, on the expected move. So I'm not thinking we go much higher. But at the same point, I don't see anything that says that the market's ready to to break at the moment. Maybe earnings are enough to start us back down, but uh, you're almost always going to be somewhat early in shorting a, a stock or a market. It's very few people that short after the move because generally it's so violent down that you have a fairly big risk of getting crushed on the and, sh and stopped out on the return. But uh, I don't see a lot out here that says we have much higher but I haven't seen the market makers blink in the option market yet to tell me that it's time to go short. And again, I'm going to, I got kind of a brushback pitch from the Fed last week when they started throwing money at equities. And that probably tells you everything I want to know. That is, are they done throwing money at equities? And, you know, maybe it was just to keep the market nice and high uh, when the news came out from China and they'll go back to doing what they do. But, uh, you know, in the past, the Fed has folded like a $5 suitcase. So I'm not always sure that they're not going to do what they say they're going to do. Okay. 877-927-6648. We'll go back to earnings already in progress. If I got this correct. Is that right? No. Yeah. Okay. Why don't I have
Just do that. Okay. Got that. Earnings calendar, more research. Financials. Why can't I... I don't know why that did that. Now let's go do this one here. Okay, we've got Tuesday, we've got Wednesday. Okay, on Wednesday morning, we've got Lowe's. Uh, I've been going into it, it's been fairly busy. They've cut a bunch of employees. And when I was in there last time, about a week, maybe 10 days ago, I was talking to an employee while they were walking over to an aisle to help me find something. And she was, we were talking about how much stuff got lost or stolen uh, in, the, uh, in the store. And they said that they were up to about two grand worth a day of stuff getting stolen. So I said, it's about 60,000 a month. She goes, yeah. She says, that's about what we're having being stolen. I said, uh, has that gone up a whole lot? She goes, it's about tripled in the last six months. So I don't, I'm wondering if that's actually ever going to make an impact on it, just a random observation. I haven't been into another one uh, in the area. Maybe that one just has a bad surrounding in a bad area. But my guess is that they get a lot of stuff stolen, and it probably went nuts when they got rid of a lot of the help out there where people could just do everything they wanted and there was no one around to even bother to look but uh back up higher for uh three bucks eh, back into resistance levels you it's really been kind of a strong move down lowe's looks like the better of the two of home depot and lowe's but uh i don't know don't have a good sense <laughs> Fortnet. Okay. Don't know what's going on there. Oh, roof's leak. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, TJ Maxx. Uh, this one may be a huge whiffer. TJX. Mostly because they talked last time about how much stuff they didn't have that was still on the uh, docks. It was a low priority to get the stuff in. We'll be back in a minute. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. 
trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Yay. So anyway, uh, Lowe's, uh, Target. Again, a lot of these uh, companies are having inventories rise because the stuff that they ordered for the springtime is finally showing up. Uh, and, of course, uh, yeah, probably the only good thing is that now that we're finally slowly starting to get back to uh, – some level of reality at the docks. Stuff is starting to flow. Not perfectly, but better. Um, it's hard for me to believe that everything turns around in a single quarter. But maybe these guys are more sanguine now that they've got at least uh, a fairly good indication of when stuff's going to show up. But when I look at yeah, the Target's a little farther away, so I generally go to the Walmart. Well, I go to Walmart and see so much stuff missing. I don't know. Maybe somebody's been in Target and they can call and tell us. But my guess is that everybody's kind of missing stuff. Seems like televisions are showing up, electronics, that kind of stuff. But there's a lot of other stuff that you just really don't think of. Missing towels, missing uh, stuff for home goods, uh, Dog food aisle always seems to be almost empty. There's some other stuff going on out there, and I don't know if that's coming back quickly. Certainly uh, for Walmart, I've noticed that the uh, house brands, the generic brands, are almost all gone, which is a pretty good indication that many people have moved uh, downscale and are buying those opposed to the retail brand to cut some pennies not uncommon in a rising uh, gas price uh, uh, regime but uh, we'll see whether or not it's a little bit more sticky here and what target and walmart has to say but uh yeah i think a lot of people whistling past the graveyard of course uh, we've got analog devices opposed to those digital devices um again kind of hard to believe that these are doing as well they do say a lot of products though that go in cars so if that if if the supply chain's actually getting a little bit better maybe there's some reasons to be more optimistic for adi but uh 169 eh, not a lot of volume out here today again that's on wednesday so we've got a little bit of time but uh i think these things are all going to go up and uh, probably push the shorts out. And then we're going to find out what really everybody has uh, going on. Uh, okay. Now, after, after market close, there we go. Anything else? Key site technologies. I know one of the guys in the den has done some work with them. Kind of interesting to see this one back up. Energy is okay um volume is not you're doing about half the volume of the february 10th high and they, these guys sell a lot of stuff sold a ton of stuff into the 5g transition very expensive uh, test equipment 
And it's kind of interesting to see that they're back up here, but I don't see a lot of juice, nor do I see a lot of people dying to get in uh, to these things. But uh, Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're back out. Now, of course, uh, we heard a lot about uh, EVs over the last week with the bills in Congress. Um, SQM, uh, the Chile uh, state-owned really kind of mining company, uh, is up to the previous high going into this week. May 27th, 112.78, 2.7 million shares with 1.4 million shares today. Eh, could it get a little more? It could. Um, energy off this low is not good on the way back up. Um, and, of course, that's offset. I think a lot of people look at Tesla as a proxy for that. And if Tesla's going up, they're buying uh, lithium. Uh Tesla probably going up as uh, they talk more about uh, getting to the stock split, the revert, not the reverse, the stock split uh, in Tesla. You're back up to the previous high of 940. That day had about 24 million shares. Uh, you're into it with 24 million shares. Again, this is one that people just kept on shorting and shorting and shorting. And... It not had a good outcome for those bears on it. Um, I look for trading signals. Generally, it's done fairly good. If this would have come up on lighter volume, I would have been short it. But uh, it's got some decent volume. And again, a lot of people buy stocks like this on splits coming, thinking that there's something good out there. The reality over time or historically over time, splits really don't change that much. And in fact, they tend to stamp down volatility and higher prices for a while, um, opposed to when they were very popular for a very short amount of time back in the uh, late 1990s, early 2000s. Since then, the, uh, the uh, idea that a split was uh, an easy way for the stock to go much higher yet again. It doesn't hold as much water as it did 20 years ago. Yeah, very big cup here on the uh, Tesla pattern and decent volume. Uh, okay. I think, you know, they've been saying that even with the shutdown, they got a million cars out in the last year from China's uh, location. That's been fairly good for them, I think, at least on the PR front. Okay, so let's get to Thursday this week. Uh, Kohl's, this thing's been a perennial whipping boy. It's had uh, enemies at the gate. They should have taken the money at 47 bucks. They didn't. Uh, I don't know how long ago. Was that six months ago? Three months ago? I... I uh, starting to lose track of time on this one. Certainly, they had this uh, company that was willing to buy them out, I think at about 50 bucks a share. Uh, they made a bunch of noise about how they were going to turn everything around. It uh, doesn't look like they turned anything around. So you're back up right in the middle of the gap. The only good thing I can say is maybe these guys finally capitulate and get bought out. And uh, I don't know if they were going to take them private, but they were sure going to... Uh, get rid of everybody in the executive suite and suites and start over because these guys have not really gotten it right. Um, just been in a bigger trading range sideways for a long time and not much way in that. If there was a surprise, I suspect it's to the downside on earnings and the upside on a potential buyout. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the proverbial split uh, we've got some other uh, companies uh, in the solar space coming out on this one one of the ones I liked the best was Canadian Solar not that I trade it anymore but whatever I bought it for I forget what it was a buck and a half it was 14 bucks in 2009 you look at that double bottom out there and uh, pretty much convinced me that I was going to spend the rest of my life looking for low volume retests of previous lows. We'll be back in a minute. 
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we go, kind of a probably a uh, quiet close here. I don't think a lot of people are going to want to get out in front of earnings tomorrow morning. Uh, shorts continue to cover a little bit. Uh, volume was uh, light on Friday. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have here. Uh, da, da, da. Where's it at? Okay. Let's get that done. Running the whisperer. There it is. CBOE volume. Uh, again, very, very light. Maybe it's summertime trading. Maybe it's just everybody waiting for earnings in the morning, but just 6.6 .6 billion shares. So we are up at highs, very light volume. Maybe it doesn't matter as the Fed keeps dust, giving us a dusting of, uh, of cash back into the market. But uh, you would think if the Fed was going back uh, in that way, we'd probably see gold holding up a little bit better. So I don't know if it's transitory. Uh, they're getting back into the equity buying business as they did last week. But I will uh, I'll look at it. Again, uh, probably limited, very limited upside from looking at the charts. Doesn't mean that there's none. Uh, and, of course, they could really whiff, but I don't get a big sense of that either. We may have a week with not a lot of news. Certainly the option market makers continue to tighten uh, the expected results for a lot of the 
earnings stocks that I've seen this week. So the best uh, best results for them would be kind of a flattish market throughout the weekend at options expiration on Friday. Keep an eye on it. Keep on the uh, eye on the volume. If we do light volume again tomorrow, we may have a big move before the end of the week. But right now, just looks like everybody's holding things up at the highs. And the uh, if you want to short, you're probably going to have to hold your breath and count to ten. Sell when you can, not when you have to. We will return like a bad rash tomorrow. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.